Hi friends and welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today I'm participating with my original collaboration group and I'll let you know more about that in a few minutes. But first of all, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and this is my Oliver. And if you are returning, we appreciate you so much. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So I am going to use some of this burlap that I found at Dollar Tree. As you can see, the bee and the honeycomb one I've used before. I am going to use some macrame cord and then six of these Easter Bunny wreath frames. And I'm going to start off by laying them out on top of each other. So I took two, laid them on top of each other with the ears offsetting or next to each other, I guess you could say. I took some zip ties and I started uh, tying them in place and then I continued to add the wreath forms on top. Now I saw this last year. Someone posted a picture. I don't even know where. I just remember seeing a picture of them using these wreath forms to make a flower. And so when <laughs> Easter rolled around or when they started bringing out the Easter DIY or decor at Dollar Tree, I knew I wanted to get some of these, but I couldn't remember what for. And then I never got any. And so a week before Easter, I went into one of the Dollar Trees and they had a whole bunch of these. So I grabbed them because I remembered I saw someone recently post a picture. Now I'll have a link to the picture that I saw on Pinstagram, but I have no idea who created this. They were just pictures that people took of screenshots. So um, if you know who was the original creator, let me know. I'd love to give them kudos for this because I just think this is such a wonderful idea. So I'm going to, after I had that all done, I took my wreath form and some paper and I'm just tracing out a template. Now, right there, I am tracing on the inside of the ear, but I ended up having to redo it and I traced on the outside of the ear. And then when I cut it out, I actually <laughs> didn't use this piece either because it was too small. So I cut it a little bit larger than the template because I wanted to make sure that it covered the back of the ear. So after I had that all cut out, I am taking my macrame cord and I'm taking some hot glue and I'm gluing it to itself, wrapping it around the bottom of the round middle part. And then I'm just going to start wrapping and I just wrap all the way around. And <laughs> if you want to create this, guys, let me just warn you, make sure you have a movie or two to watch because this took forever ever for me to do. In fact, my shoulders and arms were so tired afterwards, but I think it's well worth it because I just love the way this came out. And, um, you know, you could use uh, jute cord, you could use um, fluffy ribbon, or I mean, uh, yarn, you could even use chunky yarn that might um, go faster as far as wrapping it if it's thicker or bigger. Uh, same with the juke rope. If you use juke rope, it might go faster as well because um, it's wider. So once I got to my end, I just hot glued the end there and then I started over. Once that was all done, I took some more and I just start wrapping the ears. And I actually think the ear part was worse <laughs> because there's 12 ears there. And so, um, you know, the round part wasn't as bad. It was the years that was the worst. So, <laughs> so I just hot glued it together. Actually, I think I started to hot glue it just to the round middle part and then just started wrapping. Sorry, this is out of frame. I'll move it here in just a moment. But you guys, I, this is so big. I actually was knocking right there. I'm moving stuff around so I can fit this so that you can see it, but I did end up knocking all my paintbrushes over. Luckily, it wasn't my paintbrushes that were soaking in water. It was just my unused paintbrushes, but uh, I had to go pick them all up. Anyway, so once I got done, I got to the end and then I just hot glued it uh, to the back of the wreath form there and then just continued um, on my way with all the rest of the ears. And I'll show you here how I hot glued it. I'm just gonna come to the end. <clears throat> and trim it off. It's actually better to hot glue it before you trim it off. <clears throat> I had a few issues where I kind of burnt my fingers. So once that was all done, I took my burlap and I start hot gluing it. So I hot glue the end of the 
burlap to the middle piece. And then I just started putting hot glue along the back of the ears and uh, just continue to add my burlap to it. <laughs> Look at my mess, you guys. This was so messy, not only because for some reason my hot glue gun is starting to get tons of glue webs, which I hate. Um, it's never had so much webbing before, but it was probably just because I was <laughs> so annoyed by all of this. But anyways, and then I trimmed off the excess just like you see there. And this, this is what caused the mess. I mean, I need to vacuum my floor. It's just a disaster after all of that. Then I took one of these metal bees from Dollar Tree. I painted it yellow. I painted the wings white and then I did the trim around the yellow or the bee with the black as you see there. And then I'm taking my black marker here and I'm just doing some little loopy lines just to kind of give those wings um, a little animation or bring them to life a little bit. Then I decided to draw a face. I probably should have not drawn the face because I think it makes it a little look a little cartoonish, but I mean, I think it's cute. Not quite the look I was going for, but it is what it is. So I guess I could always paint over it if I wanted to. But anyways, I'm just going to add two little eyes and a smile. That's all. I added a little jute bow over where the hanger goes. And then I took my E6000 and I'm putting that along the back of my B. And then I'm just going to put hot glue around it. And then I'm going to hot glue it to my front of my reform. And then I took some jute twine tied knots on the ends and hot glued it to the back for a hanger. And there it is, you guys. I absolutely love, love, love this. You have to let me know what you think about this one in the comment box below. Okay, today is Summer Frenzy, and this is our original collaboration group. It's hosted every month by my friend Krista with Krista's Crafty Life. This month's co-host is Janice with Craftastic DIYs. And then we have Jackie and Brenda and myself all participating this month. So make sure you check out their channels, check out the playlist. I will have links to all of them in my description box below. So here's DIY number two. <clears throat> So I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paints in the color ink and maize. I am going to use some of these jumbo craft sticks from Walmart. And then I'm going to use these little um, bees ornaments from Dollar Tree. One of these wood planks from Dollar Tree. Two of these hexagon frames from Dollar Tree. Some daisies from Dollar Tree. And then this paper, I'm gonna use this yellow paper here. I think I got this actually at Michael's. And so I'm gonna start off by taking the backing off of both of those frames and removing the insides from them. I am going to keep that inside piece there and I'm gonna use it as a template and I'm gonna lay it behind my paper and trace it out and then I will cut it out. And I do cut out uh, two of these, one for each of the, the frames. Now you can use, you know, if you don't have this paper pack and you wanna recreate this, you could use any kind of paper that has a bee theme or bee coloring. It doesn't have to be exactly that paper. Then I put the paper inside the frame and I, close the backing all up and I did remove the little stands because we're not going to need them. Then I am marking uh, that wood piece was just a little bit longer so I'm marking the end of the frames to it and then I took it out and cut it with my miter saw. If you don't have a miter saw you can use um, like a little miter box saw if you have one of those. Then I took my little mini screwdrivers and I unscrewed to the bottom clips because it was going to stick in the way. And then I took my uh, E6000 and hot glue and I'm going to glue it to the back of that frame and see those uh, little, what do they call them? The little tabs would have been in the way and that wood piece would not have connected all the way to my frame. So that's why I took them off. Once I had both of those on there, I took my jumbo craft sticks and I'm just measuring where I want to cut them. And then I cut off the rounded edges, just like you see me doing here with my pencil, or with my scissors. Yes, I'm gonna cut with my pencil. <laughs> and then 
once that was completed, I took that, I'm just making sure it was the right length, and I am marking my popsicle or my craft sticks with that one that was cut. I'm just using my pencil to mark where to cut, and I did, I cut 14 of those. After they were all cut, I am going to hot glue them on. So this is the bottom part on one side, and I'm just adding hot glue to the frame, and then I'm just gonna add the jumbo craft sticks, and I'm just gonna go up. Now I do five up that row, and then I turn it just like that, and I take two more and go up this area. Um, I think it was just two. I don't think I did three. I think I just did two. Maybe I did three. I think I just did two because I, I know I only cut out 14. So once I had them all hot glued on there, I painted, as, as you can see, I taped off the glass because I don't trust myself when I paint. <laughs> and I painted the whole thing with my Waverly chalk paint and the color ink. Then I took two of these B ornaments. I took the chalkboard side and, um, or did I paint it? No, I think it's the, I don't know. Either way, I am making yellow stripes on it. And then I went around and made some little polka dots on the wings. Now, I wasn't happy with those yellow stripes. So I did end up going um, with some black paint and kind of trimming it a little bit, making a little bit more even, and then made the, the stripes a little smaller as well. And you'll see it in the reveal. It doesn't show it there. Once they were dry, I hot glued them to the middle of my frame here. And then I just made two little shoe string jute bows and I'm going to hot glue them right where that little hole is. Then I took some floral foam, added some hot glue on the bottom and added it to the, the bottom of my little planter box here. And I just started adding flowers. I had daisies from Dollar Tree. I don't know what those other flower things were called. Those were in my stash. I've had them forever. I thought I would use them and I just filled it up with some different flowers that I had. Then I took one of these little hexagon wood pieces that I had and I painted it with my maize chalk paint. Once they were dry, I took, um, I created this saying with my Cricut and it just says bees welcome here. And I'm just going to add them to my sign here. That bees and welcome was a little close because I wanted to make sure I had it all fitting, fitting on there. <laughs> Then I added a B to the top and that's all there was for that. I really love how this came out. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. I just want to thank all my subscribers for your support, your dedication, your love. I appreciate you so much. And if you're new here and you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you go. And then make sure you guys give me that comment, thumbs up, and watch those ads that really help support my channel. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find the links to those accounts and all my affiliate accounts in the description box below. Okay, on to DIY number three. So I'm going to start off with using my, this little wood piece I just got at Walmart uh, just recently. And then I'm going to use this Dollar Tree sign and I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and this folk art acrylic paint in the color yellow orca, I think is what it's called. So I started off and painted the sign with my ink color and then painted the hive with that yellow color. And then I took my ink and I am just painting those bees black as well. And sorry guys, I'm trying to see if I can find my receipt for that hive, but I don't think I have it. I don't remember how much it was. Um, after I have this all painted, I am going to take some white paint and I'm just trying to do kind of a light distressing over the wings. Um, I got a little thick in some of those areas, so once it was dry, I just took some black and just kind of went over it a little bit to just kind of soften it. Then I took this little gold marker from Dollar Tree and this round piece that came off of a Dollar Tree sign, and I used that to make the stripes on the back of the bee. Then I took my wood glue and I just put it all around the middle of the back of that hive and then I'm gonna use my wood, uh, hot glue <laughs> to go around the sides and then I'm just putting that right in the middle of my picture. 
Then I took the back of a small paintbrush and I am making dots with that yellow color just along the, the rim there. Then I took the hanger off and I put them on some painter's tape and I am taking a paintbrush and I'm painting five of them black and five of them with that yellow. Now, this is my favorite way to paint beads. I know everybody has a way they like to do, but for me, this was the one way that I like the most. I've tried other techniques, but this one for some reason, I just like this one better. And this is how I always paint it. So once I have them all painted, then I turn, and they're dry, I turn them over and then I paint the top part because that was the bottom part that didn't get painted and then let them dry. Now the inside wasn't dry and I started getting paint all over myself when I did that part, but I just went and added them onto my hanger and then I just used my stapler to staple them back on the back. Then I took some of these um, ribbons. I think they're all from Dollar Tree. I believe they are. And I am dovetailing the ends. I did four of them. They're all four inches long. And I'm just going to make a messy bow by just alternating the colors and laying them out like you see me doing right there. And then once I have them all done, I will use some jute, time, jute twine to hold them together. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. <laughs> I can until I do my voiceover, you guys. This is when I do my voiceover, you guys, I, yeah, I stumble all the time. But that's okay, right? <laughs> We're all human. We all make mistakes. Anyways, here I am just tightening it real tight. And then I'm just going to fluff it, trim off that twine. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the top corner of my sign. And then I'm just going to add a little bee. I got these bees from Amazon and I'm just going to hot glue it right there. And there it is. I think it came out so adorable. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one as well. Okay, it is a time for a celebration of your recreation. And oh, Jamie, these are so beautiful. I love each one of them. And that crackle effect on your cross is perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. And then these are so pretty, Kathy. I love the bee with the, the sunflower and the ladybug. And that bird picture was gorgeous. And Nanny, oh my goodness, girl, she made these adorable little um, farmhouse DIYs. I love them all. Thank you, ladies. And if you have a creation or recreation that you would like me to showcase, you can send pictures to that email address that's listed there, or you can send them to me through Instagram or Facebook Messenger, and I would be more than happy to showcase them here for you. So here's DIY number four. So with this DIY, I'm going to use one of these vases I got from Dollar Tree. Um, I ended up using about two and a quarter of these ropes from Dollar Tree and then just some miscellaneous flowers from Dollar Tree. So this is super easy, guys. I'm going to just start off by hot gluing this rope. I'm just hot gluing the end there. But I'm going to just start using my hot glue and wrapping it around just like you see me doing here. Now, right there, I don't know what I was doing. I was off of the end of the glass there and I thought why, why am I so off of here so I started bringing it down I did fix it later I added just some uh, jute twine to it to kind of cover that bare spot but <laughs> I don't know what I was doing anyways I finished that part and I just went on to the next row and I just kept going all the way up and for some reason I felt like you needed to see a whole bunch of this <laughs> which you probably don't need to see. But uh, yeah, you just hot glue and wrap, hot glue and wrap. That's all you have to do. When I got to the end, they always have tape on the ends of the rope. So I do just trim it off because you don't want to really see that tape there. So here I just got to the top here and you'll see me just hot gluing all the way to the top. Uh, because, you know, we all need to know how to, how to do this. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, you guys. I shouldn't have showed so much of this. <laughs> okay, so there was still a little bare spot there and I just took some jute twine instead of the rope because I thought the rope would be too much. And I just went in and just filled out the little bare area on the top and then on that little part on the bottom too. 
where I started out going crooked. And then after I have that all done, I did take my lighter and fuzz it, but I couldn't really show you because I'm right under my ceiling fan and it wouldn't light. So I took that little bottle there and traced it out to make a circle. And then I'm taking my ink chalk paint and just painting in the middle of my skep, I think is what you call it, B skep. Anyways, then I took some more of this jute twine and I'm just going to hot glue it all the way around my black hole. It's supposed to look like a hole. And because I'm using the twine and not the rope, I decided that it wasn't very thick. So I'm just going to hot glue it all the way around on top of the twine that I already hot glued down, just like you see. And I just go all the way around and that just kind of brings it out a little bit more brings it to life a little bit more. And once I have that all completed, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. I am going to take some of these bees. Now these I got from Hobby Lobby, 40% off. I did not like the little sticker on them and they came right off, which kind of makes you worried about how they work. But anyways, I hot glued these two of these bees onto my little skep. And then I just start filling them with some flowers that I have in my stash from Dollar Tree. Actually, I think the daisies might have come from Walmart, but everything else was from Dollar Tree. And after I have that all filled, I decided it needed a little bit of a bow. So I'm going to take this ribbon from Dollar Tree. I just made a little bow by doing the awareness ribbon, scrunching it up and tying it with some twine. Then I took some glitter glue, gold glitter glue, and I'm just making it look like some honey is coming out the door. And that's all there is for that one. It's super easy, but yet it is just, I think it's very cute. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one as well. Okay, DIY number five. So we're gonna use my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I am going to use a picture from this calendar. And this was this year's calendars. And then this sign I recently got at Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance for $2.24, originally $7.99. So I'm gonna start off by just painting that whole thing front and back white. Then I thought, okay, I'm gonna use a paintbrush and some water and I'm just gonna go around so I can have a nice ripped torn look all the way around this. And it works out great, except for one problem. It was still too big for my sign. <laughs> so after I had it all wet, I just went around just like you see and just started tearing and tearing and tearing all the way around until I got to the top and then it dried too much because my ceiling fan is on. So I went around and got it wet again and then ripped it off. And then the, then I went to go put it on and it was too big. So I ended up having to use my scissors and I ended up cutting. And when I do cut, I kind of go down in between the letters just a little bit, just it kind of gives it a little bit better look than just a flat straight line. And I did that all the way around the, well, the top and the bottom. Then I took my Mod Podge and I covered my sign with this. Now I, I should have probably used my uh, heat press technique. I didn't do it this time because that paper is thick and if it wrinkled, I didn't care. I kind of wanted it to wrinkle because I wanted it to have an older look. So here I'm placing it on my sign and then I realized, oh, I didn't, I missed this a, so I just kind of use my little scissors to kind of cut it there. And then I am just going to smooth it onto my sign. I took some plastic wrap after I fought with the Dollar Tree plastic wrap trying to get it to rip. Oh my goodness, I was having a day. <laughs> Anyways, and then once I had it all on there, I just recovered it with Mod Podge and let it dry. Then I took my uh, some Buffalo check ribbon. I think I got this from a Hobby Lobby and then this honeycomb ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm making two bows by doing the awareness ribbon, scrunching them up and tying some jute twine around them to keep them in the shape of a bow. After I have them all tight, I will trim off the excess twine and then I'm going to dovetail the ends. And by dovetailing, you just fold and cut at an angle. 
Then I just took that and hot glued it to the right corner. Now I didn't want the tails to cover the words, so I just kind of hot glued them in place so that way they stay glued and they don't cover up my word. Then I took some more of that glitter glue and I'm just making some honey drip from the words honey. And I just thought that was such a fun idea. I hope you like that too. But if you don't and you want to recreate this, you don't have to add it. <laughs> or if you don't have gold glitter glue, you don't have to add it. <laughs> and I added a couple of bees as well from Amazon and there it is. I think it came out really cute too. I did put that one bee there on a pile of glitter glue. I should have probably made it a little bit bigger to make it look like it was sitting on honey. <laughs> you have to let me know what you think of that one as well. Here's your final reveal. Let me know what your favorite one was today. I'd love to hear from you. I think that one is my favorite one for sure. And then make sure you guys check out Krista and Janice's videos as well as Brenda and Jackie's and show them some love and I will be back again on Sunday with another video it's the what would you make I guess to guest host this month and I'm thinking about doing Mother's Day so stay tuned for that and with all that being said you guys I hope you have a fabulous week and a blessed weekend and I will see you on the next one bye bye